Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by and all that stuff. Hope you're doing well and taking care of yourself out there. I'm in Luminar AI today. I uh, haven't really been in it that much lately simply because last couple of videos I've been talking about this Luminar Neo thing and I'll be sharing more here as I get more, but uh, part of that I was gone. We were in Oregon for almost a couple of weeks doing a number of things and uh, I came home with a few photos that I like. I'm going to share one today, walk through kind of a workflow and you know this was a well let me show you the photo here it is this is in uh, arch cape oregon along the oregon coast i was out it was sunrise uh it was just beautiful it was kind of moody and all that but as is often the case with a raw file and this is a raw file so shot with my sony camera it's kind of flat it needs some work and i really want the colors to pop a little bit you can see a little bit of warmer light kind of coming into the clouds but there's a lot of coolness as well with the darker clouds and then I think the, con uh, the contrast needs to be accentuated because it's flat. That's what I mean by flat is lacking contrast. And it's a little, um, uh, the distortion is there. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to go down here to optics. I don't really talk about optics that much, but I'm going to click auto distortion correction. And that does a great job, although I don't always feel like it does enough for me. So I'm going to go to lens distortion and I'm going to go to negative 10 and just leave it like that. And there you go, there is my new uh, base image, if you will. So there it is before and after. This was shot with a 24 to 70, so not particularly wide, uh, but yet I got some distortion, easy enough to fix. So uh, I'm gonna start with X and AI, which I like to do a lot of times when I have kind of a photo that I'm not exactly sure exactly what I want to do, and I went to 55 on that. But as you can see, it's bringing the scene to life, like the colors are starting to show up again. Uh, the contrast is a little bit better. Everything is really honestly better. It's obviously brighter, all that kind of stuff. And that's what I love about Accent AI. It just does honestly a uh, really good job. I don't need eraser. I need a light tool. So I'm going to take this temperature and I'm going to go cooler. I'm going to go to like 52, 30 something. So I'm going to call it a, you know, about like that. And the tint, I'm going to leave it at 10. So you can see I cooled off the scene still, uh, you know, I would say that the, uh, let's look at the before again real quick. You can see the, the cool stuff in the clouds, um, just the cooler parts of the sky um, are, I think, much improved. I, I, I like the interplay of the warm and the cool. Uh, that's why I like the edges of the day so much because uh, whether it's a landscape and you get some nice golden light with some cool clouds or a cityscape at blue hour, which is my favorite time to shoot in cities, you get the blue hour overall in the sky, but then you have the warm lights in the city. I just love that interplay of warm and cool because they're, you know, they're opposite. Therefore, they kind of look good together. They complement each other, right? They're complementary kind of tones. So um, that's what I've got a little bit of here, which I was excited about. And frankly, I got to be honest, I was as excited to be standing on the beach in Oregon because it's my favorite place in the country. So um, I was there and that's what I was doing. And I'm going to make some adjustments here. And this is my typical kind of massaging the photo. And I'm just kind of moving a few things around. And I got like that and I was like, well, I like it, but you know, it's missing something. The clouds seem a little bit muted. So I thought, hey, clouds are often kind of white. Uh, let's go to whites. And so I went to whites and I went to about a 25. And that's not a major deal, but it's a nice little pop there to kind of bring a little bit of that back. I like this cloud here that's kind of floating off by itself, like it ran off. And then this bigger one here, they're both kind of suspended among some other blue stuff. It's kind of nice that that bright and that darker um, opposite, that contrast, if you will. So I kind of like that. That was my light tool kind of work. And um, this kind of scene is not a scene where I want to really accentuate or bring up details. And so I went to Structure AI and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go negative across the entire photo. I started out thinking I was just going to do that in the sky, which you've seen me do in countless videos. Assuming you've watched previous videos, in which case, thank you very much. And if not, I've done that in countless videos. But in this case, I just went across the entire photo because, I don't know, that morning um, foggy kind of cloudy kind of thing with the mint. I mean, you can see that fog across the, the horizon down here in the distant beach. And by the way, do you see that person walking through? That's just kind of cool. I love that. Um, but anyway, that just to me is it just screams soft, not sharp and all that. So that's why I did that. Um, but the other thing I wanted to do, as I said, was bring up some of that warmer color. So I've got a couple of moves I'm going to do. The first one, you probably guessed it, is golden hour. Oops. Uh, and I'm going to go to like 35. And I just want to warm that up. And I love golden hour. It does kind of permeate 
the entire image, which is okay, but if you look at these top clouds, they're really starting to look, I think, kind of nice, and that's what I'm trying to create more interplay. I want to create more contrast um, just in, in the tones, but I also want to create more contrast in the color, which is the warm tones and the cool tones. I want to both kind of be um, a little bit more balanced. If you remember the initial one, it's really flat. In fact, it looks kind of brown or maybe tan, kind of khaki, khaki colored to me. Um, now it's starting to pop a little bit. So uh, that did that, but the next thing I did, and you've seen me do this before, is go to toning. So I'm gonna start in highlights, and I'm gonna go to about a 20 or so, and I'm gonna leave the hue there at zero, which is really those red tones in the highlights, um, or I should say those highlight tones are becoming more red because I've got the hue at red, and I've got the level at 20. Now I could go more, but you know I don't wanna create a fake, you know, wow, look at this amazing sunrise. I'm just trying to accentuate what, what was there and make something that I consider beautiful. By the way, pause for a commercial break, and that is, I think every time you edit a photo, you should edit how edit it however you think looks beautiful. Edit to please yourself. In other words, just a uh, just a comment there uh, for shadows. I'm going to put the saturation level at 20 as well, but I don't want to be in the red tones. I don't like what that does to the beach, even though the beach that sand has some uh, reddish orange on it. I'm going to actually go over here and I went to uh, 208, and that is actually bringing up the blue tones, and so I actually think I'm gonna, um, upon further inspection, pull that saturation down a little bit, maybe to like a 12 or something, and I'm gonna go back to highlights and maybe give myself a couple of extra uh, points bump in that. Again, just trying to create a little bit of interplay between the warmer and cooler tones. I think toning has helped me do that uh, quite a bit. And now that I'm finished there, I'm gonna go down to Super Contrast, which I love and adore and use quite a bit because it is so good at isolating contrast in specific targeted areas of the photo. In other words, highlights, midtones, and con uh, and excuse me, and shadows, and adjusting contrast and all of those. Um, I'm not gonna use all, I'm just gonna use midtones and highlights. Midtones, I'm gonna go to about 20, and shadows, I'm gonna go to about the low 30, so something like 33. And then I actually did come in and do a little bit of balance here. I went negative 20 um, on the midtones, and I actually went positive 30 something here, like 36, 38 on the shadows. And so if I turn this off, you can see that it gets a little bit more of a pop to it. So you can see it's a little bit flatter image overall. And then when I make these adjustments, that contrast really helps pop, especially I think it has helped pop kind of that fog, well not kind of, I guess it is fog, across the beach there and the horizon that's obscuring that, that lone uh, person. And this is great, by the way, being out this time of day, there's like no one there, you pretty much got it to yourself. Just pretty much fantastic. Um, that's my edit. The only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go back to the light tool and I'm gonna look at these whites again and see if I could bring that up anymore and what that does to the photo. Yeah, that's kind of nice. It's brightening it up, of course, because I'm creating um, you know, a higher value in the whites, and there's a, a decent amount of white there, but I kind of like that better than it was when it was down here. So I think I'm gonna go back up to wherever I was, 50 or 60 in the whites. I encourage experimentation. Do whatever makes you happy, as I said a, a few moments ago. Um, I think that makes me happy. I'm actually gonna try one other thing, and this is in the Glow tool. So Glow is good at, uh, let me get to Glow and go to Amount. Glow is good at popping some of those brighter colors. Yeah, you see what I'm doing here? Although I don't like it on this photo because it's decreasing my, uh, my contrast in colors. In other words, it's creating more white and therefore obscuring kind of the blue and the warmer tones. But let me try Orton, see if that does anything for me. You know, that's not bad. I like what it's doing here in the foreground, so I think what I'm gonna do, I'm making this up uh, here, my friends, because this was not part of my edit. I think I'm gonna add this as a gradient mask just for that fog on the bottom of the photo, but if you look at the before and after, you'll just look at that bottom section. Um, there it is before I've added this gradient mask, and there it is after. So it did pop that fog area along the horizon, make that a little bit brighter, which I kinda like. So. I just made that up on the spot. Um, I think it works well. I encourage experimentation. I'm even experimenting as I make videos because that wasn't in my notes, but I just had that idea. It kind of works, I like it. So anyway, my point was experiment, have fun, try some of these different tools. When you have clouds like that, but it looks kind of flat, which by the way, let me show you the before and after. I mean, what a difference you can make just having some fun, giving it a go, moving some sliders around and just kind of 
for lack of a better word, hacking your way around, I think you come up with some really spectacular things. I'm a little bit biased. I like the photo. I'm particularly fond of the place. So any photo I take there, even the really bad ones, I love just because I love the place. I like this photo quite a bit. I like the mood. I tend to go a little bit more dramatic if you've seen my edits before. I don't think I really went over the top. To me, that looks realistic. You, you Feel free to disagree. Uh, I don't expect you to always agree with me. But anyway, there's an edit. I hope it helps. I hope it gives you some ideas in your own editing. Thanks for watching and hanging out. I've got a lot of photos uh, of seascapes and beaches and sunrises and sunsets. I've got some that I really like. So um, you'll see some more videos really soon, my friends. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. And uh, if you're not, please go take care of yourself and uh, come back soon. I'll be sharing more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. As I said, I'll see you really soon and adios.